All right, welcome everyone. Uh, sorry for the slight delay. Had a little bit of technical difficulties and uh, internet connection going down. Um, I'm Jeremy Yowie, Alta's Vice President of Communications, and today we've got a great webinar lined up to discuss marketing opportunities that uh, you can take advantage of uh, through uh, uh, online and digital advertising. Uh, we've also got a, a cool walkthrough that we'll, we'll, we'll share with you on, on how you can actually create and place your own ads. So hopefully you can walk, walk away with uh, some good information to uh, go ahead and, uh, and implement some of these things and, and do these things on your own. Uh, before starting, I just need to touch on a few housekeeping items. A uh, copy of today's presentation was emailed uh, about an hour ago to everyone on the on the webinar. You can also download a, a PDF of the presentation from the uh, GoToWebinar uh, window pane. And uh, if if you're not logged on on your computer and if you didn't get a uh, get my email earlier, uh, I can send it to you at the conclusion of today's webinar. Just send me an email at J Yoe at ALTA.org. That's J Y O H E at ALTA.org. Uh, everyone's lines are muted for today's presentation. If at any time you have a, a question, uh, please submit them through the questions box and we'll hold a little bit of time for a QA at the end of the presentation. And as an added benefit, uh, the presentation is being recorded. After we've got it processed, uh, the recording will be available on Alta's website at ALTA.org forward slash title topics. And you also get an email with a link to access the recording. I need to thank Fidelity National Title Group for sponsoring our Title Topics webinars this year. Uh, their support allows us to continue providing these uh, educational opportunities free of charge. And uh, with that out of the way, please uh, let me uh, quickly introduce today's speakers. Uh, first, we have Lisa Steele. Lisa is Executive Vice President of Mother Load Holding Company. She's also a chair of ALTA's Home Buyer Outreach Program. Uh, next, we have Wayne Stanley. Wayne is the owner and chief inspirational officer of Bo Digital. And we also have Elliot Dill. Elliot is co-founder of Title Tap. So you've got three great people who, who are very well experienced in, in digital advertising and are going to be able to give you some great advice today. Uh, thank you all for joining us. And with that, I'll turn the presentation over to Lisa. All right, thank you, Jeremy. So we'll start out today uh, talking about the opportunities. So we wanna thank you, first of all, for joining our webinar. Elliot, Wayne, and I are happy to be here to share some ideas, some insights, and practical applications to get you ready to make your marketing soar with digital advertising. We're gonna start with uh, some statistics. So who can you reach with digital advertising? So based on research by um, the National Association of Re uh, Realtors profiles of buyers and sellers, um, the percentages are as follows. 72% use a mobile website tablet search device in their home search. That's increased, as we know, from recent years. Um, and also 58% of buyers who use mobile searching found their home through a mobile app. Again, that has increased. Um, Google Analytics state that 80% of home buyers use the internet as part of their home buying research process. And realtors also have recognized that 43% of consumers actually start their home buying process online before they even pick up the phone or contact anyone in regards to the process. So while the percentages vary slightly depending on source, the fact of the matter is the percentages are increasing each and every year. They'll only rise higher as mil more millennials become uh, more prevalent as home buyers, and that should transpire over the next 10 to 15 years. The next statistic I want to talk about is that 50% of people have found their homes that they've purchased online. So again, we talked about the tools that they're using in percentages to, to search online, whether it be tablets, the internet off their PCs, whether it be their mobile uh, devices, um, but actually the homes that they've ultimately chosen and purchased, 50% of those buyers initiated that home search online. So whether it's um, going through various sites, 
um, digital advertising gives you the exposure to the buyers and sellers using all of these various tools to search for their next purchase. So as you can see by the percentages of folks that are actually completing um, purchases this way, it has become a critical part of our marketing. Um, we're not an industry that typically you know, goes for advertising, but throughout the process of the uh, digital exposure being easy and cost effective, um, it is a great way to segue yourself into that space. So in 2020, half of the workforce will be millennials. Uh, consumer studies have shown us that millennials like to research and understand their purchases. So where are they researching? Online. And are you prepared to meet them where they are? I think that's an important question to ask yourself. Some consumer studies have gone so far to say, unless a millennial finds you online, they will not trust you as a company. That's a pretty staggering statement. The good news is um, we're going to share with you today um, some ways that, that digital advertising and digital marketing can be uh, implemented easy and done inexpensively to create a digital presence. So I'm going to pitch it over to Elliot to segue into the benefits. Thanks, Lisa. Can you guys hear me okay? Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> so before I dive into some of the benefits, um, I wanted to just highlight a couple things. Many of the, the agents that I speak with um, get hung up on, on maybe only focusing on organic marketing over digital advertising. And when I, when I talk about uh, organic, I'm talking about things like uh, Facebook posts and search engine optimization, whereas digital advertising is taking that same structure, but essentially paying for placement paying for like preferred placement. Um, and organic is, is great, and you should always focus on that, but keep in mind that with organic, it is a long-term game. Um, the thing to remember with digital advertising is that uh, if you're not doing it, you could be missing some opportunities there, just as Lisa was saying. Uh, especially, uh, you know, a couple of instances where, where I've seen that happen is uh, maybe there's a lot of competition in your market, or maybe you're relatively new in your market, um, those are just a couple of scenarios where you can re really capitalize on, on digital ads. So with that being said, that sort of leads me to the very first point of, uh, of, of targeting. And this is a big benefit. This is actually one of my, one of, uh, my favorite things about digital advertising is that you can really uh, reach exactly who you want to reach, whereas with organic uh, marketing, you have to throw a bunch of stuff at the wall. You might have to wait a long period of time to see what actually resonates with your market. Okay, so um, with social media channels like Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, they offer very flexible ad options, and they allow you to segment uh, who your ad, uh, who sees your ad by, like geographic location, demographics, job title, interests, things like that. Whereas with Google Ads, uh, you can actually target people that have intent. For for example, if they're searching for a Miami title agent, if you happen to be in the Miami area. Um, so that's, that's kind of the, the benefit of digital advertising, taking the same thing and, and boosting it out there for uh, specific people to find. Um, is anyone in the, uh, on the webinar now doing anything with Facebook ads currently, uh, especially with the uh, consumer market? Uh, Jeremy, I don't know if you can see on the, uh, if, if anyone's typing in there. Um, and I ask just because Facebook actually made a change um, that they're going to be removing the behavior called likely to move, which has been really popular among realtors and, and people in the industry. Uh, and they're actually replacing it with one called house hunting. And that change is actually going to take place on August 15th. Um, if you currently have ads running, they will still run, I believe, through October, but you won't, won't be able to modify them anymore after August 15th. So, um, again, the, the behavior was likely to move, and the one that's replacing it is how something. Hey, Elliot, a few people have uh, indicated they've done, they're doing Facebook. Great. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, but that's, that's essentially all I had on, on targeted. Wayne, Lisa, did you guys have anything, anything to add there? Uh, no, not on targeting. Thanks. Okay. So that leads to the second point 
which is uh, the, the second thing that I love about digital advertising is how cost effective it's become. Traditional advertising has, you know, essentially become very expensive unless you're a big brand or, or you have uh, deep, deep uh, pockets. So one example of this is uh, television stations, they can charge thousands for a 30 second commercial and you still have to get the commercial produced and, and things like that. Uh, meanwhile, print advertising can range anywhere from $500 to, uh, you know, over $20,000. And oftentimes, to get preferred rates, you have to commit to three months, six months, a year, uh, longer periods of time. But with digital advertising, it's cost effective. Uh, small businesses, startups, mom and pop shops can afford it. And just to give you an example of that, Facebook's average cost per click is around 61 cents. So just think about that for a minute. Um, you know, so every person that reaches that that you can uh, reach that actually clicks over to your website, uh, you know, is less than a dollar. One way I like to describe digital advertising, and, and Wayne, feel free to chime in here if you have have anything to add, but um, is that um, if you can put in a nickel and get out a dime or a quarter, then it might make sense to do. Wayne, did you have anything anything else there? No, I mean, I, I agree with you, Elliot. I, I think that that's a good um, analogy there. And I just think that, you know, I always start small. The, the best thing about digital advertising is that it is cost effective and being able to, to start small and sort of test your message, test who you're targeting, all the things that Elliot's going to go over in this section, um, you know, you can start for as little as five or 10 bucks. And so, thinking about how to not waste money and thread that needle in the best way possible in your market uh, is a good thing. And, and this is Jeremy, and I could just add in a little color, you know, ALTA in June, with it being National Homeownership Month, did a couple of campaigns. One was to just to highlight the benefits of title insurance you know, when you're buying a home, and the second was to raise awareness about uh, wire transfer fraud. Uh, we did one on Google Ads, and that was the uh, the, the raising the awareness of, of title insurance. And we spent $500. We ran it from you know all of June, and we our targeted audience you know, were people ages 25 to 34. And we threw some keywords in there, such as you know buying house, home, keys, family, title. And so for that $500, we had. 390,000 impressions and almost 30,000 people viewed uh, the short video that we produced, you know, highlighting the benefits of title insurance. So for me, that that was a very good reach. Obviously, we we, don't, we, we can't measure the ROI. We're not getting title orders in, but, you know, it's basically an awareness campaign. And the other one we did on Facebook and we spent $300 and the duration was two weeks, again, raising the awareness of, of wire fraud. And the results there, we reached 32,000 people and more than 15,000 people viewed the video. And interestingly, we also got organic growth as well. It was, the video was shared 150 times. That, you know, so that's additional eyes seen it that we didn't have to pay for. So just a little, little example of what, what ELTA has done on the uh, digital advertising front. Elliot, back to you. Yeah, that, that's awesome. Those, that's, uh, those are great examples. Um, thanks for sharing that. So that sort of leads to, to point number three, or benefit number three here, is, is flexibility. And what, what's really nice about digital advertising uh, is that you can easily start and stop campaigns. So um, and if you think about that, it, it becomes uh, even more flexible. Yeah, a single piece of content, for instance, can be shared across a variety of platforms. So you can have a single ad, but then you can actually, uh, you know, you can market it in uh, you know on LinkedIn or on Facebook and, and use kind of the reuse the same piece over and over again. So you know what that means is that you're no longer confined to one page or 30 seconds or whatever your traditional ad uh, was was created for. And this also comes in handy with any kind of fluctuating budgets. Uh, companies that maybe have had an unexpected low quarter, they can uh, they can cut back without uh, incurring any cancellation fees and things like that. So it's very flexible uh, in that realm. Anything to add before I move on here? I'd just like to add, Elliot, the other thing about the flexibility is that you can revisit messages. Um, you know, we often realize that it takes five or six times before seeing something that it really gets through, or it may just be 
you know, uh, different times that you can actually float a message. And the example I would give is just, you know, on the issue of wire fraud, right? Putting alerts out there to encompass uh, different times of day, different um, media uh, venues. So the nice part is in revisiting messages is you can actually track as your following increases as well. So the flexibility um, of changing an image, using the same content, um, and having relevant content that's available uh, at your fingertips uh, is a huge benefit. Yeah, and th this is Jeremy, and, and our Google Ads campaign, and just to stress what Lisa was mentioning, I was following the campaign, and I was actually under the assumption that we'd get more views on the weekend when people are home, you know, they're, they're, they're with their spouse or their boyfriend, their girlfriend, and, and they're going to, you know, ch do some house hunting. That wasn't the case. The most views were actually during the work day, typical work day on Monday and Tuesday, and then it kind of tailed off. So what you can, what I did then was just stop the campaign on the weekends because, you know, there's no sense in, you know, paying for it then when there's not a whole lot of eyeballs and then just relaunched it you know, like Sunday night or, or early Monday morning. Yeah, that, that's that's really cool. Uh, moving on to this, the fourth point here is uh, measure. This, this one's really important uh, and sort of near and dear to my heart because this is where I, I see a lot of agents uh, fall off the wagon. Um, and they're, they're, you know, they're gung ho. They're ready to to start digital advertising. They want to, you know, go to Facebook and Google and all these different things. But what they don't do is set up the systems to track the results. And uh, you know, the the way that I've sort of started to describe this to people is that buying title insurance is not like buying shoes online. It's in fact much harder to track. And if you think about if you're shopping for shoes, uh, you know, just to use that example, um, as the merchant, as the e-commerce owner. You can actually track, you know, how many people see your ad, how many people visit the product page that are above the shoes. You can see how many people add the shoes to their shopping cart. And then you can see how many people uh, have actually purchased the shoes. So you can track that funnel all the way down to know if what you're doing is actually, uh, you know, you're getting an ROI on it. With title insurance, it, it doesn't really work exactly that way. Um, you know, that realtor might see your ad today, but they don't have a deal for you today. And they might not have one tomorrow either, uh, but they might have one next week. They might have one next month, right? So it's your job to kind of stay in, in front of them and, and, you know, keep their interest over time. Um, and, and also as a result, you really have to make it a company habit to ask people how they found you. And not everyone is going to know or remember exactly where they found you. But if your ads are working um, and, and everything's trending up uh, and you're asking the right way and your team is asking the right way, you should start to hear that your efforts are paying off. So, uh, Wayne, did you have anything else, Lisa? Yeah, on this one, I think you're exactly right, Elliot, thinking about the ROI of what you're doing. And Lisa and I have talked about this a lot before, and I often push our folks to ask why, not just the ROI, to really know why you're doing these ads and what you're trying to get from it. And if the goal, like you were saying, Elliot, is to just – um, if if that ad is supposed to result in X amount of new orders, you know, that week or that month or that quarter, that's a different audience, that's a potential different message, that's a different way of what uh, you want to be doing. And so when you're thinking about how to measure your um, uh, results, like you were saying, sometimes it's not for an immediate order. It's to create the relationship and to keep you top of mind. And so don't just think about the ROI, but really boil it back down to the bare basics of why are we doing this? Because if you get tripped up in, well, that ad that we ran for two weeks didn't result in X amount of orders, then you will likely, it'll take longer, I think, for you to see success from what you're trying to accomplish. I don't know, Lisa, if you have other thoughts there. No, I agree 100%. I, you know, I think the why can vary. I mean, if you have multiple branches in different communities, that's going to mean a different thing. So those those things are measurable um, based on, you know, what your why is. Are you trying to establish a better presence in the community? Are you trying to um, establish a personality? Are you trying to uh, have customers relate, um, you know, uh, more frequently with your staff or see the personality of your company? And I think to that point, um, 
you know, absolutely, I agree. There has to be some type of uh, overview if if you're gaining traction and momentum. But I will say that sometimes that does not equate in an order, you know, in the door per se as an ROI count. So I agree with both of you wholeheartedly. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for, for adding that. So benefit number five, faster to market. So I alluded to this a little bit earlier, uh, and I gave a couple of examples, like for instance, and if, if you're new to the market or have a lot of competition and different things like that. But another thing to consider with digital ads versus organic marketing is that organic marketing is slow, uh, very similar to how traditional marketing is. Um, search engine optimization, for, for instance, can take months or years, and there's no guarantee. And you, you really don't have much feedback, uh, you know, early on to see if it's working, right? Similar with like a billboard. If you take out a billboard, it's going to take some time for you to know if you're receiving a positive ROI from it, uh, even if it's just brand awareness. So, um, you know, the thing with digital ads is that they're nimble. You can toggle them on and off. You can increase and decrease the budget easily. Um, you can change them and update them in a flash. And, and I think uh, Lisa had alluded to this a little bit earlier, so I don't know if you guys have anything to add to that. But Yeah, I mean, I'd like to add, I, I think that the thing I love about it is the modification on the fly. Um, you know, if there's something happening in your market and it's a valuable content, get it out there. Um, you know, the, I'm going to give an example, right, of the Super Bowl ad, right, when the power went down and Oreo did the dunking from the dark and it completely went viral. Um, they took advantage of a moment, right? It happened very quickly. It was unexpected. It wasn't like they had this in some deep advertising or marketing plan. Um, and, and we have the opportunity on a regular basis to use things that are happening in our industry or our communities in order to better connect with our clients. So I would say that that, I think, is a really important part of the digital advertising and the digital marketing, marketing um, you know, uh, prospect. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And actually, while you were talking, I, I thought about an example. We had an agent that actually realized um, that uh, they, they kind of just noticed that they were getting a lot more refi uh, orders. And so they actually did take some of their budget and, and uh, turn it towards that and had some success with it. So, uh, you know, what you're saying about just noticing the trends in your market and different things like that, it, it's absolutely true. So moving on from that into uh, benefit number six here is mobile engagement. And although um, digital ads and mobile are not exactly the same thing, they do go hand in hand. And just to give you an example of that, uh, in 2018, so this year, uh, mobile ad spend in the U.S. is projected to grow over uh, to over $70 billion. And that will be 75% of all digital ad spend. So that is a huge uh, figure. And just to kind of put it in comparison with 10 years ago, um, there's been a, a 21,000, almost 22,000 percent growth from 10 years ago. Okay. So uh, this is kind of where it's at. Uh, you know, I've seen where mobile ads uh, do perform uh, oftentimes better than, than desktop ads. Not always. There's exceptions to every rule. But, um, but yeah, if, if you want to be mobile, uh, they do they, they do work hand in hand with uh, digital ads. So moving on from that, unless anyone has anything to to add to that point, um, is uh, viral, and it's uh, it's benefit number seven here. Every company markets with the hopes that what they're doing will go viral, and there's no there's, there's not like a magic formula or anything that you can do to guarantee. But in general, content should speak to it like emotions, um, content that makes people laugh or feel good uh, or ask to be shared, for instance. Sometimes you can do that. Um, th those are all things that are, are kind of uh, give it the best chance to go viral. But beyond that, it's really hard to predict what will make something take off. What I like about digital ads in the sense of, uh, you know, when, when it relates to viral, is that ads are a great way to test posts quickly to see what kind of response you get, okay? So um, say you're, you're working on a different campaign or something around your branding. Um, you know, you can take uh, two posts. You can boost them each for seven days. And you might find that one type of post gets more traction than the other. Same ad, same spend, uh, every, you know, everything's kind of the same. It's just the actual 
um, ad or, or whatever you're doing in the, the, the ad is uh, slightly different. Uh, so maybe you need to create more posts like the one with better results. And then you, you have results in seven days. You kind of know what you need to do moving forward in, in just a week. So that's one thing that I really like about digital ads when you're trying to even just craft like different campaigns and things that you're going to do organically anyway. Lisa, anything to add there? Wayne? You know, I would just say show show your personality. Um, you know, we as an industry tend to um, talk with a lot of jargon, and we use all the big words about everything that we do to uh, keep homeowners safe. And I think that when we um, relax a little bit and um, kind of use some flexibility in our campaigns, like you said, make it fun. Show a personality that your company has. Um, you can still bring valuable content by doing that in just a more relaxed type, you know, maybe choose an image that you've never gone with before, something um, that's kind of, you know, um, I don't want to say sh too shocking, but, you know, something that wouldn't be normal um, for something that you would use, uh, you know, example being, you know, a house on a tree-lined street. We see that a lot. Um, what don't you see a lot? What captures your eye? Um, and what speaks to the personality of your company? I think that is very important to implement and, and will help gain traction as well. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Jeremy, Wayne, anything to add before, we, uh, before Wayne takes us through an example here? Not for me. All right. Well, nothing I'll, pass for me. It over. I'll pass it over to Wayne. Yeah, then. nothing for me. All right, all right, here we go. Here comes some of our personality, and uh, hopefully this part uh, is interactive and fun for you. Wayne, Wayne's going to, we're going to get it set up, and Wayne's going to walk through a little bit of soup to nuts on how you can create your own ad and, and then actually place it. Just a second, Wayne. Had this all set up before my uh, internet crashed. <laughs> no worries. So yeah, I'm going to right. uh, walk through a, um, thanks Jeremy, a sample of uh, using some of the resources that Alta has put together for you as well as uh, how to actually potentially place uh, your first ad here. So um, what I'm gonna show you first is some of the resources that Alta has. Um, if you go to alta.org slash Canva, uh, and I'm sure that that will be in the email that Jeremy sends around afterwards. But if you have, want more information, you can go there yourself. It's alta.org slash Canva, C-A-N-V-A. Uh, you're going to be taken to this page here where you can see a lot of the different advertisements that the Alta Homeowner Outreach Program has put together for uh, exclusively for Alta members. And you can see that they are in different sizes. Some of these words are words, there's a, you may not know this, but there is a, an international advertising uh, board that kind of uh, helps determine, tries to keep advertising sizes similar uh, across different products. And so that's why some of these are called skyscraper ads and some have different names, but the names don't really matter. What matters is that you can completely edit these uh, to make them your own. And maybe you've decided that you don't want to uh, use the image because someone else in your market did, but you still like some of the language. And you can edit that too. You can take different pieces and uh, make it exactly how you want. And I'm going to show you how to do that here. Um, if for some reason, you know, you're watching this later and uh, you forget or you don't quite understand how I'm doing something, there's also this great tutorial here that Alta has loaded uh, to learn how to use Canva. But so let's just start with, I'm going to do the, I'm feeling the uh, yarn uh, ad here today. So we'll go ahead and click on that yarn ad and you'll see that it's going to open in Canva. It will make you log in. Canva uh, has a login system, and so if you don't have an account, you will need to sign up. It's free to sign up. Um, if you do have an account, you can use your existing account to log in there, um, and then you can start editing. It's just that simple. So um, you'll see here, you know, if I want to click on the wording, I can change uh, some of the words there. I can, well, actually, I think I can just get rid of it completely if I need to change any of those. But down here, where this blue box is, is where you can put your own logo. So uh, let's see. If we do, let's do an icon. I don't want to 
I think some of the logos that I have saved in our Canva account are probably for some of our uh, clients. So I'm just going to throw an icon in here and we'll say that it's for Stanley Title. Uh, and at Stanley Title, we really like this yellow shaped uh, figure. So we're going to use that. And all you do, so you saw, once I clicked on that, it's labeled as free. And it's got that little crown next to it. And I get asked all the time in Canva, what does the crown mean? It means that it's royalty free. Aren't they clever with that royalty sign? You wouldn't even know that. Um, so once you click on that, it will automatically pop it into your page just to show you. Maybe I, maybe I want to see if I like the yellow headed guy better than the phone. When I click on the phone, it also pops right into the page there. You can drag the corners here to resize what you're doing. You can make it extremely tiny and maybe you're adding several logos. Uh, you're doing something for your state association or something like that, who knows. Um, if you don't like it, you can just press delete and it goes away. Um, you can also resize this and place it wherever you want. Maybe you want it up here, or over there, on the corner. Obviously, you should have a good design eye to make sure that what you're doing uh, looks appropriate, but that is how um, the logo would get placed once you've got it somewhere that you want and you're pretty happy with it, um, you're ready to download. And I will show you really quick too, because there are other things already in this image. So for example, to the left of your logo, you have this text box. Uh, this goes back to me saying you should have a good design eye. Canva tries to help you with your design eye. Uh, so when you throw that logo in, if you notice as I drag it, you can kind of see a very faint uh, purple line through the middle. And that means that it's centered in the middle of that other image, which means you're not too far below it or too far above it, but you're centered right there. And if you had more up here at the top of the image, you'd be able to center it as well. Um, you can see if I want to center it in the middle of the um, image, it creates the purple lines there. If I want to put it directly in the middle, it'll kind of create the crosshairs for you. Uh, but like I said, once you've got that down there, all you're going to want to do is, let me get rid of that screen here. All you're going to want to do is click download. And then you can choose the file types that you would like. You can choose a JPEG, a PNG, which you can obviously see uh, is recommended for them. Or if you're going to share it with somebody internally for approvals or something, you can choose standard or a print version PDF. Um, most of the time, especially if you're sharing this for social uh, or for Google or something like that, PNG is probably just fine. Before I click download, I did forget one piece here for you. And that is that you can change the title of this. So if you start doing more uh, work in Canva, uh, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have good file names so that you can find what you're working on. And so for this one, uh, so that my team knows that this is a an Alta webinar sample from 2018. We're going to do that and click done. Uh, you can also go over here and click file and save to make sure it saves for you. It's still saying unsaved changes. So we'll see what happens when I try to download it here. But when you're ready, click download, choose that JPEG, and then choose download here. And your file will show up in your downloads folder or whatever the equivalent might be uh, on your individual PC. Um, and then from there, you're able to pass that off to, you know, whoever you are buying advertising from, or maybe you're going to put it into a Facebook ad, or maybe you're going to do a Google display ad or something uh, moving forward. And so that's what I'm going to show you next. That's Canva. Canva is very easy to use. There's a lot more uh, that you could do. Of course, this is saying that it's not going to download today. We'll give it another second here. Um, Canva is very easy to use. There's a lot more you can do. If you wanted to change out that background image, you could easily throw uh, another photo on there, just like you did the icon, just like I did the sort of yellow guy. Um, maybe you want something that's more of a, a commercial looking building for something that you're doing. You could throw that in and if you just move the image around on the screen, it will resize and, and throw it in there for you. So while I wait on that to download, I'm going to go ahead and start the, even if this won't download, we'll, um, we'll find an image that we can use for you guys today, but go ahead and start the Google ad portion of this tutorial. Uh, if that's the only technical issue we have during these two pieces, then we are in good shape, right, Jeremy? <laughs> um, so to place a Google ad or to think about a uh, Google ad budget and what that might uh, mean for you, you can just go to ads.google.com. That's ads.google.com. 
Uh, for many of you in the past, you may have heard of it as Google AdWords. Um, but they have changed it. You can read across the top here. They changed it because they have so many different ad options. It's not just uh, the ad word, the search piece. So that's why they have it in here. Uh, if you're creating your first ad, it's very simple, and that's what I'm going to show you. So this is the exact page that you would go to. And when you click on Start Now, it's going to take you to a page to start inputting some information. If I can get it to load here. There we go. Seems Jeremy's not the only one with internet issues today. We're just waiting on it to uh, move forward. I have no doubts that it will here for us. As you start to think about whatever you're going to do in a Google ad, you'll see that they make it uh, really quick and easy steps. And the first thing that you're going to do is put in your email address. Uh, so for me, I'm going to go ahead and use um, our general email for Bow Digital. Uh, and I'm going to do bowdigital.com just to show you. And you'll see that uh, we've already got an AdWords account associated with this email, and that may be the case. You may have signed up for this years ago and not even really remembered uh, that you've done so. But for today's purposes, so I can still show you a new account, uh, I'm going to click here so that it looks like there's a new account being created for this group. And then it's going to load in that email address that you provided. And then it's going to ask you for your password. And once you've typed in that password, it's going to load in. I think now they've boiled it down. It used to be five steps. Now they've boiled it down to about four steps that are going to show up at the top of your screen here. If they haven't changed it since the last time I looked at it. Um, and as you go in, you're going to have to start to think about uh, the ad that you want to place. You're going to want to think about the budget that you want to spend, the audience that you want to have, all of those sorts of things. Um, it didn't ask me, it might ask me a little further down here, but um, they call their ad campaign. And they want you to think about each ad that you do being part of a campaign or sort of a broader uh, thought process to your digital advertising. And that's really what Lisa and Elliot were talking about, about at the beginning of this, you know, and trying to think uh, more about the ads that you're doing, who you want to target, and now you're going to actually put that into play here. So, um, you know, they're, they're very clear about when you are charged on these uh, advertisements. So when you click on uh, decide how much you want to spend. You're only charged when someone clicks on your ad. And so uh, maybe just to start with, uh, you know, we're going to run it for a week maybe, and we'll say, let's just try $5 a day. You know, that's a pretty um, easy piece here. I think it's going to let me change my timeline at the bottom. Maybe not. But if, uh, if not, I'll give you a tip about the budget. If you don't set a timeline for your budget, but you know that you want to spend $5 a day, and after a week, you're going to check it. So after you spend $35, you want to check back in. Um, I just set a calendar reminder for me to go back in and end the campaign or adjust the budget or whatever it may be. That way, I don't spend more money than I need to. Um, you may notice that at the end of that week, if you haven't spent your total $5 per day, that you actually still have more money in your budget to spend. But the good thing about this, just like Facebook advertising, when you put in that $5 per day, it's going to tell you that, you know, right now I'm likely to get, and this is sort of where I am right now, but with that budget, I'm likely to get one click and 78 impressions. Um, I will tell you there are some groups that will probably try to trick you with your impressions. Um, your impressions are really just eyeballs uh, that have seen your ad. And in, in my opinion, in many cases, uh, that doesn't matter much. You know, uh, some, there are probably 72 businesses between the hotel and the office that I'm at today uh, that I saw and that I could say that I gave an impression to, but I have no idea who they were and I have no uh, uh, desire or inclination to do any business with them. So what you really want are clicks. You want actual action and engagement with your ads, not just uh, eyeballs on those. So once you have that dollar amount set, you just click save. Um, and then from there, you can choose your location. And this is being just a little slow, so I hopefully we'll be able to load here. But in addition, you know, it presets to the U.S. and Canada. 
you'll notice that your potential reach will kind of change as we update this. For example, if I include just the United States to begin with, I'm going to calculate here and see what we can see, but I'm actually going to put in uh, my home zip code just to see uh, if I want to target folks in uh, the north central Indiana region. And maybe I want to target that group and another community. So if you're trying to target new real estate agents, you know, there's nobody in Indiana that apparently is going to click on my ad and it goes down quite a bit. Uh, but today I'm in the uh, Jacksonville area. So maybe if I put in something about Jacksonville, Florida, that may change who we're going to target. And this is really, when Elliot was talking about the targeting, this is the kind of stuff that you want to think about. Otherwise, you're just sort of wasting your money and spending your spinning your wheels. So um, that's Jacksonville. It gets me back up to one click and 69 impressions. So that would be, I'm okay with that for the purpose of this demonstration. Uh, from there, you're going to you're gonna want to choose which um, types of ads you want to do. So Google will allow you to do ads on what they call their search network as well as their display network. And the display network, I mean, you can read this on here. They do a good job of explaining it to you um, that the display network is really the part of Google that uh, includes sites that aren't from Google. So you might see this most often on your uh, local newspaper website. Uh, and on the right hand side, you might see some ads that kind of look like Google ads, but are um, uh, obviously on the newspaper site. And so that's really where this comes into play. You're paying into their network that other people can utilize. And we're going to go ahead and save that. That way you can be seen on more um, platforms. And then here, this is where you want to think about your keywords. Who, what do you hope people are typing and thinking about uh, Googling that's going to target your business? And uh, so for you, it might be title insurance. We'll add that one here. Uh, maybe it's um, closing services. Maybe you want to look at, that one only has 320s. That's probably not uh, worth bidding on or paying for, but you never know. Uh, let's just look at real estate broadly just so you can see what the difference there might be. There you go. Uh, there you've got, I've got to have my cursor out so I can see the comments where they might be. That's 5 million right there. Um, <clears throat> so that's the popularity of these searches. And that's how you can kind of choose what do you want to be targeting? How should you be thinking about your initial keywords? There's a lot more that you would put into this uh, thought process, but just for your first ad, you know, you, it'll, based on your business and based on the website that you put in at the beginning, that's how it's sort of pre-populated some of these. That's why it thinks that I want to only talk about marketing and they don't know about Bo Digital's love for title insurance and all things uh, closing and settlement. But uh, that's why you can add your own keywords. So once you're done with that, you click save. And then from there, uh, people get caught up on the bid a lot. And the bid is something that until you're ready for uh, Google Ads 2.0 or maybe even the varsity team, you know, however you want to think about it, let Google bid for you automatically. It's not really worth you toggling with bids. Um, that's for a, a more advanced course for sure. But um, from here, you can go in and actually create your ad. And so it's going to look exactly as it would look on Google for you. You can see that it will preload the websites that you have, but maybe you've created a uh, specific landing page for uh, this ad, which I strongly recommend, and I know Elliot and Lisa would as well. Um, so maybe this one is, uh, I can't think of a good one, so we'll just do bodigital.com slash alpha is where we want people to go. Um, then you can create your headline, and they've built a preview ad on the right for you so that you can kind of see as you change certain things, uh, how's it going to look, how much room do you have. You'll notice that, you know, Google ads are very short. You don't have a lot of room to say how amazing you are and what makes your title company different. You've really got to um, think creatively here. And so this one says New York Budget Hotel. Uh, maybe yours is... Uh, fast and secure. I should have thought about a good, clever um, ad before we went here. Do I have enough room for closing services? Not quite. So we'll just say fast and secure closings. And then underneath that, 
Uh, you can do a second headline, which is where you see right underneath that, where we might say use Stanley title today or call us or whatever. I usually have most folks, I recommend that that headline number two is an action step. It's some sort of action oriented piece that's going to get people to, to truly click on your ad. And then from there, you have 80 characters to give a description. Uh, and so your description should be that my company is better, faster, and stronger than yours. And here's why. All in 80 characters. That's very hard to do, but we have faith in each of you. And so then when you click save, when you click save and continue, what's going to happen is, let's see, it might already have my credit card information loaded, but just in case it doesn't. Oh, good. So um, once you click that, it goes on to the payment. It's going to show your ad one more time. It's going to show you the clicks and what your budget is, and then it's going to show you how to pay, and it's going to um, try and get you to put it, not try, it's going to ask you to put in your uh, Visa or MasterCard or whatever you might have. From there, once you've got all that entered, all you're going to do is click finish and create ad. And once that happens, you'll get a confirmation email from Google that says that your ad is under a very quick review just to make sure that you're not doing anything illegal or lewd or anything like that. Um, and then from there, they'll let you know once your ad is live. And at that point, that's when you can start looking at analytics and that sort of thing. And that's definitely a a level two class, but we just wanted to show you how to how to create visual digital ads that you might want to use through Canva, which was in download for me. Sorry, guys. Uh, but then also the actual Google ads themselves that you can go in and start creating in your market. And with that, I'm sure there were questions. I know I went through it quickly, but I tried to be uh, pretty detailed and help you get started on your first piece here. And I will go ahead and turn it back over. I think Lisa is up next. Thank you, Wayne. Well, we've talked about the why and the how, and so we're going to get to the what now, what's available. Um, thinking and organizing about content can be totally exhausting. We realize that. And, you know, I'm going to make the assumption that some of you may have a marketing person or department to handle that, and many of you may not. Um, so we're going to kind of walk through what is available. The great news is a lot of content has already been prepared, and it's available for you to use right away. Uh, it's on the web, Alta website. If you go to alta.org forward slash home buyer, and you look at the home buyer outreach program site, um, and all of this content is free for all Alta members. And what uh, you'll find there, you'll find some blog content, uh, which is longer, wordier content for email and social media. The nice part of that is this content was professionally written. Um, it is clear, concise, understandable to consumers. And so you can actually take some of the blog content and utilize that in many different ways to establish social media presence, to find verbiage for an ad. Um, there's also marketing flyers. Uh, that's content that's ready to go in a flyer format and rack cards. These rack cards are great for first-time home buyers. You can put them in the lobby of your offices. You can utilize them for realtors, um, depending on you know uh, your area and your regulatory guidelines. You can provide them um, to realtors to use in their open houses, things of that nature. They're very convenient um, and easy uh, to transport. You'll also see that there's print ads already done for you. They're uh, very creative um, and they can be used anywhere. So again, it's something that is at your fingertips, already uh, prepared and, um, and done with a thought process. Um, the company that uh, Alta utilized to help um, launch the Home Buyer Outreach Program uh, did a lot of consumer research so as you're going through this, you'll find that the content um, is multi-generational. So, you know, when you're looking at reaching consumers, uh, a variety of consumers, when you're looking at reaching a variety of uh, realtors and lenders, again, there's going to be some ads that appeal to some generations and others that appeal to different generations. You'll also find PowerPoint presentations. 
that are already complete for you with notes. Um, and these are for, are for home buyers and realtors. And then there's a realtor resource section as well. Um, and that section has realtor content available. So it's exclusive to realtors and it's based on um, what they should uh, know in order to educate our customers as well. Um, social content, you'll see some scripted social media content for all platforms. It's already sized. Uh, so if it's an Instagram post that you're looking for, it's already sized to what you need to complete that. Um, you can use uh, various content for Facebook postings, but all the materials are there for you. There's digital ads, animated digital ads. So if you're going to place an ad on a website or use it on your website, again, it's completed and done for you. And then there's also educational templates, how to, um, in order for you to be able to take your uh, marketing to the next level. So for example, there's how to edit a PDF there. If you don't have a marketing department, if you're not familiar with um, you know, graphic designer marketing, there's tips and tricks on that under the resources as well. And again, all this has been um, thoughtfully completed. Uh, we are seeing you know, from the Homebuyer Outreach Program, we get a lot of feedback from companies that are utilizing these tools and um, the ability to have the content ready to go and have it be relevant uh, to needs across the country um, is very important. And it's something you don't have to think about. It's already there. You can always customize it um, if there's something particularly uh, you know, prevalent in your market. At least you have kind of the structure and bones to go from. Um, there's also a Spanish language suite. Again, customizable for your own market. Uh, our Industry Explained is a great tool. It has um, really kind of been a launch for how we talk about and how we educate on our industry. You know, we talked about earlier about we sometimes go in the weeds. Um, th utilizing this kind of keeps us to an understandable um, example of, of our industry and what we do each and every day. This is also a great tool to uh, use for your onboarding practice for new employees because it gives them a strong basis on how to explain our industry. And to make it easier, you can even go into alta.prints or altaprints.com, <laughs> sorry, and you can customize right on the screen. You can customize, add your logo. Um, we've seen the Canva examples that Wayne used, used today. You can even download if you want to print um, if you, you know, have a color printer you want to utilize, you need them right away, or you can order through alta.prints or altaprints.com, and they will actually ship to your location. So um, if you're doing a presentation and you, you need, um, you know, a, a bunch of rack cards, just have it shipped to that location. It makes it quick. It makes it easy. And you get a cost benefit because, you um, it's group pricing. So the more that it's utilized, the better cost um, effectiveness it has on uh, you know, your budget. So getting started, this is our last uh, slide before we take some questions. We know we've thrown out a lot of information today. Don't let it overwhelm you. If you can highlight one or two things to implement this week, um, you can always expand from there to increase your digital presence. Um, you know, we've often said, you know, throughout uh, the change with, with digital and social media and, and the expansion of such that sometimes you can get stuck in, you know, a paralysis by analysis. So maybe break it down and choose one or two things that you took away from today that would be quick and easy to implement that you can master before trying to, um, you know, implement everything that we've talked about. Wayne, Elliot, do you have anything to add? I, I think it's just, uh, just just like what you were you, you both were saying. Uh, you know, just pick pick one thing. Uh, you know, maybe one goal per month. Start small, and uh, and go from there. But uh, yeah, I totally agree. All right. Well, uh, thank you all for uh, some 
great insight on the opportunities for uh, with digital advertising. Hopefully, we've given you some uh, information and tools that you can go out and try this on your own. I uh, lost audio connection a few times. Hopefully, uh, it wasn't uh, too choppy for all of you out there. As we mentioned, we will, we will hold a little time for Q&A. So we've got about you know, three more minutes till the top of the hour. Um, one question that came in, if the group wants to address, uh, Rainey asked, uh, what are some ways that you can ask people how they found you other than in person? I'll, I'll jump in first. Um, uh, I think it's important to ask how they found you. I think that um, you can do, lots of people have instituted post-closing surveys. You know, they might ask them, email them later on with um, quick survey links on not just how they found you, but, you know, how was the experience for them? Uh, if you're in the western part of the country, I know you don't have a, a table closing, so it's a little different for you, but I think emailing them, talking to them about you know, just how it's important for you to know where your customers come from so that you can continue innovating and serving them in the right way and giving them the resources that are going to be most helpful. You knowing kind of where they they live and how they find you is important in that way. And so I think email and surveys through all kinds of tools, even free ones like SurveyMonkey are probably the most utilized, but Lisa and Elliot may have other thoughts too. No, I think that's a great point. The one thing I would like to add, um, and I think we talked about it early on, but you know, educate your staff on what you're doing as well, where you're placing ads, what you're um, actually putting out there for general consumers. I know we made the mistake of <laughs> of having a um, a client call, or well, not a client, potential client call one of the branches and said, um, you know, I found you uh, on Google and I, I have a customer and I need a referral and those type of things. And the office wasn't aware, you know, that that there was anything out there um, other than just a general Google search. So, you know, they replied via email saying, can I ask how you located us? Because they were, you know, all the way across the country and they were contacting a little branch in a rural area of California. Um, and so once they established that dialogue, he said, oh, I found you, you know, via a Google uh, ad. So, again, educate internally. Um, we learned that the hard way when we initially um, started doing some, some additional digital advertising and marketing. And, and I think, you know, depending on how it's presented to you, um, you can utilize uh, many different ways to ask how they found you. I mean, some people use uh, the iPads in the closing rooms as well to do pre-closing surveys. So there's options out there. All right. Yeah, good info. Thank you both. Uh, a question from Joyce. Uh, she's asking if uh, we still have marketing material that explains why the buyer needs title insurance. She's in a market where the seller chooses the title. So Lisa, maybe you want to share a little bit about what the hot committee is uh, working on? Absolutely. And Wayne, I'm going to ask you to join in as well. Um, we absolutely recognize that, um, you know, some of the information is directed on the buyer side. However, what we have found throughout the implementation of HOP is that there's many seller states and they are craving the information that we have uh, put together. So you can utilize the, the uh, pieces on um, at alta.org org uh, home buyer for sellers as well. We are specifically um, organizing some pieces now that we will say are, you know, actually more driven um, directly to sellers. But what we have learned is that both buyers and sellers, from an education standpoint, as much as we would like to believe that everyone understands completely what we do as an industry, um, we've found that they don't. And so just the general education pieces um, do flow to both sides, the buyer and the seller. So you can utilize the content that we have in many ways to approach sellers today. But I know, Wayne, if you want to talk specifically, we've got some great things coming up on the seller side that, you know, are, are very driven to sellers. Sure, yeah, just quickly. I mean, we're going to create some... Uh, I think it's a, a PowerPoint, a rack card, and a one pager uh, that will be specifically helpful in seller paid states. 
so that when you get pushback, you know, that it's, it's in the contract or you need other ways to talk about um, what you offer and what your services are and why, you know, title insurance is important, um, that's going to be included. And that's something that, you know, regulators, like Lisa said, are asking for too. And so it's going to be something that you can kind of utilize with any facet uh, of your customer, whether that is a regulator or a uh, realtor, lender, attorney, uh, or a buyer and seller. So uh, we're trying to make them pretty well rounded. And I think the the PowerPoint too, I don't have my notes on this in front of me, but uh, it's going to have a lot to offer, not just sort of the general, here's how title insurance works in a seller pay state, but it's going to be helpful for your teams internally, uh, as well as external use. So you should look out for that in October from uh, the homeowner outreach program. Yeah, th fantastic. We're excited for for the rollout of that material. And Catherine asked if if the uh, the home buyer uh, the hot content is free. It is available for fr for free to ALTA members. Uh, if you are a policy license holder, you do need to become a full ALTA member to access the material. If, if you want to reach out to me afterward, I can I can help you get set up and you know get get you connected to become an, a, a full member. And um, you know, just maybe one more question. We're a few minutes after the top of the hour to, to wrap up. Uh, any recommendations, you know, on which site to maybe dip your toes in first? You know, that may, might be the easiest to use. You know, Wayne, you use you did the Google Ads, and also it's Facebook. You know, any any preference or any any either one you're seeing better results with? I mean, I, I, mean I, I think it really depends on your market. I, I don't know what Wayne's going to say there, but uh, for, for us, uh, it depends on the market. Um, if you have a lot of people with intent that are that are searching, um, you know, for like I, the example that I gave, Miami Title Agent, or you know, uh, Pennsylvania uh, Settlement Services, or whatever whatever it might be, whatever for, for whatever your town is, uh, then Google might be a great way to go because people are looking for you know they have intent to buy. They're looking for your services. Whereas maybe you're in a different market with a lot of millennials or, or different things like that that you're trying to attract, then the Facebook, Instagram route might be a good one for you. It really, I think, depends on your market a little bit. Wayne, I don't know what, if you had something different to say there. No, I agree. I think it goes back to the testing. I think you uh, uh, commit to, you know, 10 or 20 bucks on Google and Facebook. I think those are the two best to start with. Um, and even with, you know, some of how Facebook's changing, like Elliot brought up during his section, um, that's still really the best way that you can mine uh, specific customers right now. And so I think if you can put a little money behind both and kind of see how it performs, we've had really successful Google ad campaigns in some areas. And then it totally depends on uh, people's individual shopping behaviors, behaviors like Elliot said. So uh, I would try both. And then whichever one has more traction, that's the one that you kind of run with and do even more testing and start to sample your budget there. My gut for most people is always Facebook to start in that realm. But um, you may see that you have a gold mine on the Google search side in your area. All right, experiment and test. All right, now go out there and do it, everyone. Uh, thank you, Wayne, Lisa, and Elliot. Good information. Uh, just everyone on the call, if you missed parts of today's webinar, if you think others in, in your office would benefit uh, from uh, hearing the presentation, just a reminder, recording will be available on Alta's website, alta.org forward slash title talk topics. And again, you also receive an email with a link to the recording. Uh, looking ahead, next month we will uh, offer our third uh, third quarter compliance webinar. Uh, during this presentation, we'll focus on money laundering, red flags, and uh, challenges to comply with the Bank Secrecy Act. And uh, with that, that will bring us to the conclusion of today's presentation. Uh, to wrap up, I do need to thank Fidelity once again for sponsoring our title topic webinars, and also thank thank our speakers for their thoughts on digital advertising. Take care, everyone.